Hello and welcome back to Matty's Tottenham blog and today's Tottenham versus Leeds preview on the live Tottenham Fan Voice podcast. Uh, joined today from by Oscar from All Leeds TV, Anthony from Let's Talk Tottenham and Todd from Pods for TV. Uh, links to all their channels will be down uh, below in the description. I might as well introduce ourselves. Oscar, how are you getting on? Yeah, I'm not doing bad at all, mate. I'm really looking forward to tomorrow's game. Um, I think obviously it becomes a bit less crazy after tomorrow, you know, in terms of so many games in such a short space of time. So, yeah, no, looking forward to it. It's been a decent Christmas for us after a terrible start um, against Manchester United a couple of weeks ago. Um, but to be fair, we've recovered well and uh, kept two clean sheets, which is quite rare for us as well. So looking forward to this one. Yeah, well, let's hope those clean sheets will be stopping on Saturday. Uh, Anthony, how are you today? <laughs> I'm doing well. Happy New Year. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping to... I'm sorry, Oscar, but I'm I'm not hoping it goes so well for you. But uh, but of course, yeah, we just uh, <laughs> hoping to start start to see a turnaround for Spurs, and I think tomorrow would be a great day to do it. Yeah, that's fingers crossed we can get that done. And Todd, how are you today? Always fantastic. Never a bad day to talk about Tottenham. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. I uh, just get a bit of a bit of housekeeping done uh, before we do get started. Um, I just want to get a big shout out to all of our channel members. Uh, we're at eleven at the moment. They are Ratty Starr, Jeremy Smith, Arthur Everett, Paul Markey, the English Yid, Darrow Flanagan, Rob Hogan, Ashley Chanel, Dick W, Paranormal Frank, and James Watson. Uh, so thank you very much to all of you for supporting the channel. Um, I do want to bring to your attention as well the uh, the the thing Marine are doing at the moment. As you know, Marine who were taken on in the FA Cup in about a week and a half. Uh, they've lost a lot of income from their. Uh, the game now being behind closed doors due to the uh, increased restrictions in Liverpool. Um, so you head over to their Twitter account. They're uh, selling virtual match tickets. Uh, it's a fantastic raffle. You can become a manager, uh, their manager for a game and a friendly. And Spurs have put in uh, two amazing prizes as well, including a skywalk at the stadium. So make sure to go over there and support uh, Marine and get be in with a chance of uh, winning some good, uh, good rewards there as well. Um, but look, let's get down to business. And I think we should start with the the breaking news that we got a while ago from from the Guardian. Uh, and it is that Deli Ali is expected to start for Spurs against Leeds tomorrow, which is uh, for me anyway. It, it is a bit of a shock. I'm, I'm surprised at this one. Anthony, we'll start with you. Uh, what do you make of uh, potentially seeing Deli Ali from the first minute tomorrow? Honestly, I, I'm glad to hear it. I, I think he needs he needs to get going. It's it's been frustrating to watch him this season. Watch him being pulled off. Watching how Jose has talked about him even in the media, just kind of focusing on his mistakes. So I'm really hoping that he'll he'll take his chance. I don't see him going out on loan, especially in January. So I think now is as good a time as ever. Just kick off the new year with a good start. Yeah, I definitely agree. Todd, how do you feel about Ali? Um, I think we're going to see shades of Delhi against Bournemouth um, in one of Mourinho's first games, if you remember correctly. I think he picks mm -hmm. up a goal and an assist. I really do. Yeah. I think mm -hmm. Leeds, the way that you play, we all know that Leeds is just going to come at you. That's just mm -hmm. how they operate. <clears throat> and that sets up perfectly for us to crush balls over the top on the counter. If we know Delhi's starting, if he's playing in a wing, in a role that allows him to run behind, mm -hmm. it's going to be a good day for us mm -hmm. and him. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree. In that game against Bournemouth, I think Deli Ali got got two goals early on. It was one of the one of the many games in the early Mourinho era when he went three 0 up and somehow won the game uh, three two. <laughs> like there was a weird one of the, the West Ham and Bournemouth game. He conceded the two goals in the exact same minutes. Mm, yeah. um, but Oscar, from from a Leeds point of view, it, do you think it, it could be good news for you that Deli Ali is on the pitch? Uh, no, no, I don't think. No, I think Deli Ali is a top top player. You know, mm. I think at the end of the day, he's had a bad 12, 18 months. Maybe he can go further than that, but. Ultimately, when you've got a player like Deli Ali, it's probably the kind of player we don't want to be facing at this moment mm. in time. Um, runs in behind, mm. can expose our high line. You know, it, it's it's very clear um, something we struggle with. You know, in terms of runners from deep. You know, I think Suchek a couple of weeks ago for West Ham proved that. Um, of course, there's a lot of problems making late runs into the box. Mm. Um, obviously, Bruno Fernandez um, in that six-two game. Yeah, you know, look, I'm not saying Deli Ali is on that level of Bruno Fernandez, but it's a similar kind of idea. Those late runs into the box. Neither centre half, you know, will be obviously they'll know who to pick up. But when you're making those late runs, you're forcing people into late decisions, and I don't think that suits us very well at this minute in time. I think when when everything's in front of us defensively, I think we're absolutely fine. You know, Burnley, West Brom, everything was in front of us. There wasn't anything really in, in behind, and we're just able to press them and, and kind of just crush both teams just through the press, really, in that mm -hmm. sense. And mm -hmm. um, obviously Tottenham, you've got Son running behind, Ali running behind. You know, it's a there's a massive threat there. You know, there's a massive threat for us to deal with. And I think I will be amazed if we keep on this uh, clean sheet run, to be honest. I'd be absolutely amazed um, if we do keep a clean sheet tomorrow. I can't see it, to be honest. 
And that's me being a very positive Leeds fan. I can't see how we keep this Tottenham team quiet. But on the other end of the pitch, I think we can cause problems ourselves, mm-hmm. to be fair. Yeah, no, I completely agree. There are certainly a few Leeds players that I'm worried about tomorrow, which uh, we'll get on to, to very shortly. Um, Simon Cohen here is saying Lamella should start. And Todd, the, the right side of our attack has been kind of the one place in our team where no one has really nailed down mm. um, a starting position there. I think Lamella has probably been the closest, but injuries have, have uh, hindered his season so far. Do you think Lamella should be the guy to, to get the nod out in the right tomorrow? No, I hope actually that they put Delhi there, to be completely honest with you. I hope okay. that that's the way that we utilize him and do allow him to run behind and then cut in off the edge. Um, and just not mess with the midfield right now if we can help it. Um, especially given the fact that that Bale and um, you know potentially Lucas with the exposure to Vinicius is are both sidelined. I need Lamella coming off the bench at 60 minutes to mm-hmm. shithouse his way to helping us win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he's that perfect player. And we were talking before the stream about how Deli Ali is kind of a Jose player. I think Lamella certainly fits that bill as well. Yeah. Um, Oscar, Rob is saying here, I think Leeds are an anomaly and could cause Spurs problems. Frustrating Jose and thus frustrating the Spurs players. Uh, selection for Spurs is key tomorrow. Third man runs hurt Leeds. Um, do you think he could be different to the likes of Man City, the kind of really attacking teams that haven't been able to cause those problems? Do you think he have the potential to, to be different to that? Yeah, I think obviously the key thing for us, um, the way we play is... The midfield, really, that's the key part of our mm. team. You know, I think in any game, any given game, we are cap- capable of creating chances. But in this kind of game against Tottenham, where I think you do defend really well, to be fair, I think that's obviously you know, when you came onto our channel, Matt, as you said, you know, the last, is it five open goals? Uh, sorry, five open goals. play goals you can see this so far this season. I mean, yeah, yeah, that's I phenomenal, so. really. That's a phenomenal effort. Um, so obviously, it's going to be difficult for us to create like we normally do. Mm-hmm. But what I will say is that if we're able to win that midfield battle, control the game, because I think we'll have a lot of the ball tomorrow. You know, I think obviously in this kind of game, the way Tottenham set up at this at this moment in time under Mourinho on the counter attack in a low block, I think obviously Man City, Arsenal, I think they both had kind of 60, 70 percent of the ball. I could actually see us having that, and it sounds crazy as a newly promoted team to be saying that, but it's just the way the way we play. But the thing is, we've got to be dangerous to that possession. We've got to actually really control the game. Um, in the middle third, really, in that sense. Mm-hmm. Because if we don't, if we lose control of the game, and you've got Son, Kane breaking on us, Ali mm-hmm. making third man runs. Yeah, you know, I think as Joe said on our channel as well, it could become a nasty one for us. It really could become a nasty one for us. You could you could purely play on the counter attack and score goals against us at this moment in time because we play such high risk. The full mm-hmm. backs push up. Effectively, we play with a two man defence. You know, in open play sometimes. You know, with, with how high the fullbacks push how high we press as a team if you're able to play through that you know a lot of teams have had success against us but at the end of the day i still think and um, obviously that man i saw both the man city and arsenal games i think both of those teams just ran out of ideas um, and I, I like to say that's something leads don't do we do we don't tend to run out of ideas even if we lose games we do stand, still tend to be a threat in that final third i mean we score 30 goals in the first 16 games and mm. that's clearly the strength of our team I think defensively you know there's a lot of criticism for our team I think obviously both teams here have got problems with set pieces you know I think obviously mm-hmm. very well documented both teams have got problems with set pieces so I would not bet against um <laughs> being a set piece goal tomorrow off um off one of the teams mm. yeah definitely it's, it's it's a it's a place to keep an eye on your know, spurs 10 goals conceded from penalties and set pieces this season for a team who you know for a month we're top of the table and we're talking about a title race uh, it's it's definitely not good enough. Um, Anthony, Oscar has mentioned there the, the kind of midfield battle, which could be really important to this mm-hmm. game. And the Irish did, David Harris, a close friend of the channel, of course, uh, mm-hmm. saying, do you think Delhi starts instead of Ndombele because of fitness against a high-energy Leeds team? Or does Ndombele play beside Hoybier and Sissoko misses out? So what, what do you think that midfield setup could potentially be tomorrow? That's a great question. I feel like... I think, like, Ndombele has to play. He's got to play, and Hoybier has to play. So I think Sissoko misses out. I think, um, you know, there was a question to Jose about how he's going to line up with a back three. Will he have four? Um, you know, I, I just don't think it's uh, wise for us to get rid of Hoybier, uh, and Ndombele is able to just carve up midfield left and right. So I think Delhi does. Um, if he does start, that's who who the midfield three will be. And, you know, the question about Lamella, I just want to go back to that really quick. 
Yep. I do not think that Lamella is able to play for a full 90 minutes. I don't think he gets a start for a long time. And personally, I think I in January right now, I think they should start to just see what the offers would be. I, I'm sh- I think his contract runs out in 2022 and just see what's out there because he's just so – inconsistent in terms of his ability to be able to play for us um mm-hmm. so yeah so i think i think that's what our midfield three will be and i think it i think like uh you said oscar we're gonna let you guys have the ball for the most part but that counter is gonna be coming strong and hard and i'm hoping we'll finish those whatever they are four or five really good clear-cut chances yeah i agree it's it's um i know I, i've been speaking with uh, oscar and joe and all these about this the kind of the midfield setup that leads have um, I tweeted about it recently. It is just quite often the only thing I can describe it as is a black hole in the middle of that park. And you know, against West Ham, Oscar, I'm sure you remember it, Sebastian Haller. Uh, his his hold of play in that game was really, really important to the kind of it, it helped West Ham control the game to some extent. Mm. And I feel like if Harry Kane is a man picking up the ball in those positions uh, tomorrow, tomorrow afternoon, Leeds could be in in massive, massive trouble. And there there could only be potentially one winner in that game if you do afford uh, Harry Kane the space that that he would want. Go ahead, Todd. Well, I wanted to ask about that because in the last few games, what we've seen the league do to adjust to Harry Kane being arguably the best passer in the Premier League is just foul the hell out of him as soon and as often as possible. And it's extremely effective because it essentially shuts down the counter immediately. Mm -hmm. Um, What's interesting is going to be basically the two counters passing one another and exactly who has the time and space. Um, the one real issue that I'm concerned about is Calvin Phillips being able to sit in front of that back four and just soak up pressure. And if that's mm-hmm. what happens, we're going to be looking as, um, someone else, one of the, the, um, viewers mentioned for those, those third runs. And I'm mm-hmm. curious is to, I feel like this is one of those, those games where we see an Indombele goal again, mm-hmm. right? Like mm-hmm. I, that'd be perfectly set up for that. Mm-hmm. My question is, <clears throat> is that. How has the transition of Calvin Phillips sitting in front of the back four kind of helped protect against your guys' vulnerability in that midfield, Oscar? I think, obviously, we've had Calvin Phillips start the season, again, didn't start the season particularly well by his standards. Hmm. He then got a, quite a big injury against Wolves, and then I <laughs> missed, I think it was five, six games. In those five or six games, we conceded the large bulk of our goals in those five or six games. There's no coincidence about that at all. We just, when we had Calvin Phillips missing, we got hit pretty much every game. We conceded mm. two goals on the counter attack, not just one, two goals on the counter attack. You know, and, and that was the frustration. We, we could not defend in transition at all. I think even out the back, we struggled a little bit in terms of the build up play. So he's absolutely critical um, to all kind of elements of our play, really. I think it, what gets ignored a little bit is how good he is in the build up, you know, in terms of playing the ball out the back. I think for me, that is probably, I'd even argue, his biggest strength is, is, is kind of playing the ball out the back in terms of playing cross field passes, getting us up the pitch as quickly as possible, exiting us out of the, um, out of the first third and to an extent, really, really critical in that sense. Um, I think in terms of defensively, he's, he's just very, very wise, Calvin Phillips. In terms of, as you were saying before, you know the the fouls and that lot, you know the tactical fouls. I think Pep Guardiola calls it. It's something mm-hmm. as a team. I don't think we we've done enough this season in terms of when we've been hit on the counter, just just fouling players. You know, in terms mm-hmm. of where we faced Wilfred Zahar this season, um, Jack Grealish. We did, quite, we did it quite well against be fair on Jack Grealish in the Villa game. Um, but I was thinking, you know, other games like that. Bowen, Jared Bowen, Saeed Ben Rama when we played West Ham, we just let them just roll, it just run and run and run. And I know they're very good technical players, but just foul them. Just take a yellow card if you have to, stop the counter attack, and you close a lot of their a lot of their creativity if you do that. And mm-hmm. um Calvin is so so crucial in this game. You know, in terms of the problem he has though, is that if Deli Ali starts the game in the 10 roll, and Dembele starts the game in the 10 roll. He's kind of got this mark two players in effect because for me, Harry Kane, I know technically he's a centre forward, but for me, he's more than number 10 now. Yeah. You know, I think he, I yeah. see him as a lot more than number 10. I know, I know technically he'll be listed as a centre forward, but for me, the way he plays now, yeah. 90% of his game is behind, is almost behind human Son now. Son mm-hmm. is almost playing as like the second striker almost these days. It's, uh, yeah. you know, in that kind of dynamic. And so, Phillips has got to pick him up um, and and Dembele, so that's a bit of an overload in that sense. I think I'd really want to see Mateus Click 
at times dropping a bit deeper, helping Calvin in that sense and, and just working as a, as a unit, really. I think, as Matt said, you know, defensively against West Ham, the midfields struggled in that sense because obviously Rodrigo Moreno, who's an absolutely fantastic footballer, hmm. is still not quite in sync with our press yet. He presses like a centre forward still. He pushes a bit too far at the pitch. Calvin drops and it leaves, as, as I think Matt explained, a big hole in our midfields. And that, and that is a bit of an issue. Which we, we'll definitely start Rodrigo in the game. But mm. the thing is, that is there's absolutely no problem in that when we, when we do press so high. Mm. The problem yeah. is, when you face a team that can play through that, mm -hmm. West Brom, Burnley didn't, simply didn't have the quality to do it. Mm -hmm. Tottenham. Tango Yundembele is one of the best players under a press in the whole league for me. Yeah, yeah. He is impossible to get the ball off. Yeah, The only way you get the ball off Yundembele is if he makes a mistake. It's not a case of you for, you getting the ball off him, it's if he mm -hmm. makes a mistake. And he, and he doesn't make mistakes. He's so clean technically yeah. um, you know, in terms of how he can just turn and get himself out of pressure. So he's a big player for Tottenham. Mm -hmm. uh, Lazelso as well, if he plays. Again, I know that's quite unlikely. Um, so there's a lot of technical quality in that Tottenham team. Hoiberg is someone I've always liked, even at Southampton. I thought he was, it was always a matter of time until he made the step up. It's no surprise to me um, that he's done so well for Tottenham. Mm. Um, so there's a lot of technical quality in that Tottenham team. So the press, we've got to get it absolutely spot on tomorrow. We're going to play high risk. But if you play high risk, you've got to get the press absolutely spot on. Mm -hmm. We've seen against Manchester City in the game, actually, that Matt is showing on screen right now. In that game, the press was just so, so right. It was so, so right. In the first 15, 20 minutes of that game, we really, really struggled. Man City could have been two or three up. And I'm not going to lie about that. They could have been two or three up. But after that first 15, 20 minutes, we started to press the unit. We started to realise the danger was Kevin De Bruyne, the Phil Foden, I think, who played as well. We just started to really press them when they were on the back foot. And, and they couldn't get out, Man City, really. And we, we probably could have won the game, to be honest. And... And it's going to be very much a similar kind of game for us. Again, Tottenham are a little bit more defensive for me in that sense. You know, obviously you play a bit deeper, you sit in a bit deeper. But on the counter-attack, you're definitely a lot more dangerous than Manchester City at this moment in time. So it's I look I look at um Tottenham, and I've, I've said this um you know on other Tottenham channels recently that Tottenham are our kryptonite in a sense in terms of how they play. Um, you know, I think we've yeah. seen this season with Crystal Palace and West Ham. Sitting in and hitting Leeds United on the counter is well, probably one of the most effective ways of beating this Leeds United, Leeds United team. Um, I think obviously you've got the extra advantage that you have more technical technical quality than us. So it's a really fascinating game from a tactical point of view. I don't think it'll be the greatest game in terms of aesthetics, in terms of watching a game that the beautiful football will be played. I don't think it'll be necessarily be that type of game unless we score first. If we score first, I think the game massively opens up and then turns into a classic. If you first score first, I think it's a spectacle. I think it loses its interest because I think it, if you yeah. score first, I think it turns into a 2-0 well, game. Um, Oscar, it loses its, it's, it loses its interest until the 80th minute and then you guys should, you know... Well, yeah, if we keep ourselves it. in it, yeah, well, hopefully Jose will... Uh, Go a little bit over defensive, and we'll we'll um, we'll catch you on a set piece or something. That's uh, that's what I'm hoping for. I can't believe I'm about to say this, Oscar, but I almost hope you guys score first because I want to <laughs> I want us to play this this score in the first 15 minutes and shut it down for the rest yeah. of the game is not good for my heart. No, like, <laughs> it's so disappointing, and I feel like you know, I was talking uh, on the channel to Holly, and and we were just talking about how I feel like West Ham when we we're up three and then we lost, you know, well, we drew, but it felt like a loss because they scored all three of those goals. I feel like Jose, he went into that shut it down mode. It's like, we're just going to get one or two up and we're going to be really compact and not concede. Well, we, we did well for, I think it was like four or five games. We had a couple clean sheets, but the problem is, is we can, we concede. And I remember talking about this early on in the season. I was on um, Matt, your, your podcast here. And we were talking about how, when I was given my scoreline prediction, I had to say one for the away team because yeah. that's just who we are. We just will concede one. And so I'm, a, I'm with you. I, I feel like if we can concede it at the right time and then <laughs> hopefully uh, everybody's got a little more fire under their butt. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll see a, a much more uh, positive result. I'm definitely with you there. I think what that really boils down to is um, Davinson Sanchez. Uh, mm. Because if you remember, it was Davidson, Sanchez, and Dyer that were that were um, the pairing for that run. Where yeah, yeah, we gave up a goal, but we were winning because we yes. were playing the way that we could. Um, 
And that West Ham game where we gave up three in the last 10 yep. uh, was basically Davidson Sanchez telling Jose Mourinho that you can't play a high line with me. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> and so we bought Joe Rodon, who's a naturally left-sided center back, to back up Eric Dyer, I guess. Yeah. Um, but we still have Toby and then a giant need uh, at the right-sided center back to, mm. to replace Sanchez um, mm-hmm. in order to give – Jose, the type of uh, confidence that he needs yeah. in our back four to play that high line again, which allows us to do what we do um, and play some enjoyable football. What, what I don't understand, though, is why, you know, in the up until that game against West Ham, we were scoring goals. I mean, we scored, what, six against Manchester United. We put seven past Maccabi Haifa. We were scoring so many goals. And then it was after that game. Now we're doing these one ones, two ones. Like, I don't know if it's there. They're not. Is Jose... Is Jose not telling them to risk going forward and get that second, get that third goal? I know he says, I told them different and they didn't do it. But I think it is in the back of their mind. They're worried about not, you know, getting called out after the game that your mistake led to this one goal that we got and now we drew 1-1. I mean, it's also the competition that we're looking at, right? In the run of games and the amount yeah, totally. of games in that timeline and the amount of important games in that timeline away from home yeah. with the mounting injuries and possible coronavirus. Dude, the thing is, is that it's really, really tough for us as, as fans and, and mm-hmm. pundits and, and, and uh, people who enjoy watching Tottenham mm-hmm. uh, and, and Leeds. Sorry, Oscar. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> like every single day it's part of our lives Mm -hmm. um is that we overanalyze the hell out of it and if you look at this thing in a vacuum it's really easy to be like what the hell jose but then again that guy's got three premier league titles (laughs) and so you step back and go okay well look at this is here we are at the end of the christmas period if it weren't for the fact that fulham you know got called off at the last second um you know we would probably have what 30 or 29 points somewhere in there Yeah. yeah Yeah. And so you're looking at that going, okay, 29 points at, at going into the new year mm-hmm. and, and we're, you know, four to six points off top. Like yeah. that's a comfortable position to be in. Like, yeah. okay, we're all, we're through the, the hardest away fixtures arguably in our schedule. Right. Um, with the exception of going to Etihad, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, we're, we're in a position to be successful on a downhill slope so we right. can coast a bit in particular places. Plus, mm-hmm. we, you know, if we get through, um, you know, big if, uh, if we get through Brentford um, in the semis of the League Cup, that final is in uh, April instead of February. So yeah. we've got extra time yeah. to kind of focus on the league. We're going to yeah. be okay is the yeah. way I view it. Yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> I really I really hope we are, but I, I love the positivity. Uh, I just want to thank Jeremy Smith there coming into a uh, two-pound super chat saying, come on, you Spurs, we'll win 3-0. Um, Shane Fleming as well saying uh, a little bit of ghosting. I think Harrison or Nafinia will cause huge issues on the outside. Will really depend on if Bamford can take his chance or two. Yeah. And there was another comment there um, saying we were underestimating Leeds, and I I, I can't find it uh, right now. But I think uh, a lot of Spurs fans could be looking at this in a sense of you know Leeds ha- have just lost six uh, two to Manchester United. They're a newly promoted side, but you know as I was saying to you yesterday, Oscar, your team who have you've the joint best starts to a Premier League season from any promoted side, and you may have lost six two to Manchester City. But you were extremely unlucky not to beat Arsenal. You hit the woodwork four or five times. You were extremely unlucky not to beat City. You drew one one there, and you gave Chelsea and Liverpool a great game as well. Like, how confident would you be? Would you almost would you be more confident going into a game against one of the big sides than you would be against one of the smaller sides? Or does Tottenham's kind of different approach would that kind of take that element away? Hmm. It's a hard, it's a hard one really because up until we played Chelsea um, at the start of December, I was very much under the impression that our style was more suited to playing teams high up the table. You know, I think obviously we saw from that Arsenal game, they played quite open against us. We tried to man-to-man mark us, but we were able to move it. We were able to move the ball so quickly. We had such quick um, rotation in midfield that we could just play through it, really, in terms of what Arsenal were trying to play against us. And somehow we didn't win that game. I still don't know how we didn't win the game. But again, it was quite a similar story against Manchester City, even against Liverpool on the first day of the season. Yeah, we see the four goals in that game, but... For me, we matched Liverpool on the day. We really, really did match Liverpool mm-hmm. on the day. We had two penalties. I'm not saying penalties aren't goals, but it wasn't a case of Liverpool cut us open and score four goals and we were really naive and lucky not to lose by more goals. It was nothing like that. It was just a case mm-hmm. of it was a really, really, really good game of football. Um, but since that Chelsea game, um, where I'm not saying Chelsea sat back against us, they, they just kind of allowed us to have possession in certain areas of the pitch and they made it just a little bit more... They kind of... 
really packs the midfield, made it a lot more difficult to for us to progress progress the ball. And obviously, we saw at the Manchester United game that um, I think the thing with that Man United game was that their attackers were just so on it on the day. You know, Fernandez was yeah. just. I'll admit it, he was absolutely unbelievable. Um, I think Sean Gwells just scored. Scott McTominay. And often you get him on the score sheet at all, not 22 he, goals, yeah. He, yeah. Played, he played like prime Paul Skulls on the day, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, the way, the way he was burst into the box, I was thinking, I, I knew he was a decent player, but I was thinking, oh my word, we can't get anywhere near him. We can't get anywhere near him. He's just burst into our box and yeah. he's smashing ones into the bottom corner in the first 30 seconds of the game. And I just think that that game, it's kind of tempered the expectations when we go into the big ones. Um, I think obviously Tottenham, I think there's a big thing. The big thing for me with Mourinho is that um, I've no problem with how he plays football, but you've got to get results with it. I yeah. think that's the yeah. thing. I think any Tottenham fan would say that. We're right there the with you. Style of football, <laughs> <laughs> the best style of football is the football that gets you the most wins. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm, I know I'm a massive uh, BL's Easter and I'll never ever want to see Leeds play the way Tottenham do having you know, had Marcelo Bielsa at the club. Um, I'm not having a go at Tottenham, but it's just, you know, in terms of having, when you've got Bielsa at the club and the expectations are quite low, it, it, it's just the way it is. But obviously, look at Tottenham at this moment in time. If Mourinho went for it, mm -hmm. allowed Son, Kane, that little bit more freedom in open play, you know, when you're building up, maybe got that little bit more threat in terms of Bergwijn in the team, Lamella, Ali, you know, in, in the number 10 role and play in Dembele a bit deeper, I think mm -hmm. I honestly think we, we would be in big trouble tomorrow. Um, and I just think the way we've started the last couple of games, um, you know, the, if you ignore the Man United game, we were two down after three minutes. Other than that, we actually have started games really, really well. We went one up inside five minutes at Chelsea, one up inside five minutes against West Ham, um, yeah. Burnley and West Brom, we got the early goals. And ultimately, I think if we do get that early goal tomorrow, I, I know obviously... What you're saying there in terms of you, you really want you want us to score first, and I can understand that. So I can, I can understand that, um, especially after the last couple of weeks when. Uh, it's, it's, yeah, we don't want you to score last because that's that true. Means, <laughs> that's, that's a good point. But Sorry. it is interesting that you bring that up. I, I was actually going to ask Oscar: Are you guys worried as Leeds fan about Bamford's finishing? Um, mm. I've watched a few of your matches and he, I feel like there's been a handful of sitters that have been really tough to go to watch go wanting. And, mm. and I, I can only imagine what it's like wearing a lead shirt and, and sitting at home watching that. So I'm curious, how are you guys uh, in, in the Patrick Bamford camp? Well, Lord Patrick Bamford does not get um, <laughs> criticism of the Leeds United base. I mean, I'm just going to add in here, but I'll, while you try to um, have a go at my um, Patrick Bamford, he has actually scored more goals than Harry Kane um, at this down. moment in time. At this moment in time. I'm going to mm. exaggerate that. Yeah, at this moment in time. That could be different. <laughs> cool, mm. uh, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to live off that That's one fair. for the time being. I'm gonna, but no, to be fair, look, <laughs> Patrick Bamford's finishing has improved massively this season. He has missed a couple of Big chances last couple of games um, against Man United, to be fair. We had two big ones. Um, I mean, his heading isn't great. I've asked, There's yeah, one in the Liverpool match. There were two in the Chelsea match. Yeah. So I was just I'm not going to lie. His heading is... Um, I love I love Patrick Bamford, but he does head <laughs> like he's got a 50p coin head, to be fair. It just <laughs> bounces. Just but I, I do love Patrick Bamford because his other elements of his game are just absolutely outstanding, to be fair. Um, outstanding te technician. The only thing is, I just wish he had that little bit more pace because if he had that bit more pace, I, gen I genuinely do believe he would be one of the best strikers in this league. He just because he's just got so much technical ability, you know, he could just drive past players with ease, you know, in, in almost in the sense of um, what you see from the top sense forwards in the league. But, but look, well, yeah, remember, you're talking to Harry Kane fans over here, man. If we only had a little more pace, <laughs> yeah, that's that's what we need. Harry Kane, I mean, wow, if he seriously, if Harry Kane had the speed, I mean. He, he he would be winning Ballon d'Ors. There's no question about it for me. Um, and he probably, he, I think he has got a good chance of winning one at some point in his career. But my word, if he had pace, he'd be um, you know even more unstoppable than what the already is. So I'm just fair. Thankfully, I'm thankfully that, he, he, he hasn't been there. <laughs> <laughs> thankfully, he hasn't though. From being honest, yeah, but yeah. having said that, if Harry Kane did have that bit more pace, would he be more willing to drop in and just yeah. play like the key provider to human son? Probably not. Sometimes things happen for a reason, to be fair. Sometimes things happen for a reason. And to be fair, Patrick Bamford, no, he's, he's absolutely adored by the fan base at this moment yeah. in time, you know, in terms of how he's been playing. I think, look, he misses chances, but I think pretty much, to be fair, other than your Canes, your 
Sons, Salas, etc., etc. I think any sort of striker below the top six is missing chances, you know, in yeah. this league. I think it's the it is the difference in quality. That's the um, bottom line, really. And I think um, in terms of how he's played, I can't have any criticisms. Um, yeah. Maybe if you just work on that heading a little bit, he's gonna he's gonna be even more unstoppable. I wanted mm-hmm. to ask you, Oscar, um, stateside, we've been hearing about Jack Harrison for years and, and talking about how he was a big deal and how he had you know quality above and beyond the league that where he was playing and it was a matter of time before he realized it. How has he settled in at Leeds and, and how does the fan base receive him as a player? Jack Harrison's a really interesting player in the in the, um, in the Leeds United team. I think obviously it'd have to go back to when he first signed, um, you know, in terms of obviously he's got he's made the move from uh, New York City to Manchester City. And he's obviously never really had that opportunity at Manchester City. But um, I did have a bit of inside information on Jack Harrison at Man City that they were planning on using him as a left-back um, at that time, as a backup to Benjamin Mendy. Of course, that plan may well have changed now. Um, they've never really shown that interest in keeping them. That's that's right, Shane. That's right. Um, I'll turn the <laughs> for time. I'll I'm, that for the time being. I'm not going to make that argument, but if someone else is going to make it for me, that's I'm actually make it, But I'm going to agree with that argument, is what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh, no. but, but, <laughs> um, top man there, Shane. Um, but yeah, you, you look at Jack Harrison. Um, I mean, when he first came to Leeds, he was very highly criticised. I mean, he didn't adapt to the team very quickly. Um, the first season, very inconsistent, if I'm being honest. Um, he was playing, I think obviously at New York City, he seemed to be playing on the right-hand side a lot, cutting in on his left foot, a bit like similar position to Mo Salah, uh, Lamella, etc., etc. You know, playing playing kind of, kind of as like an inverted winger, so to speak. And But at Leeds, he's kind of always been playing on that left-hand side. So it took him a year to really adapt to it, to be honest. And, I mean, his work rate com- now compared to when he first signed for the club is chalk and cheese. Totally different. I mean, now he's, he's first in the press. He's energetic. He runs in behind. He's one of our main outlets of the team. Probably probably is our main outlet in terms of counter-attacking threats, in terms of getting up and down the pitch. Helps his left-back out immensely. Um, you know, he's been he's been fantastic to be fair. You know, in terms of the last two years, he's been absolutely fantastic. I mean, this season, I think the trouble is with Jack Harrison is that people hold him in such have such high standards for him. Hmm. In that sense, I know, I'm not really sure why, but he is a, he is still his first season in Premier League football. But people sort of say, oh, he's over it that cross. Oh, he makes poor decisions, but he doesn't make poor decisions. Hmm. He's amongst I think the top ten. Possibly even top five. Um, I'm not sure if Matt might have the stats on this in terms of chances created this season, and and that is really impressive. You know, in terms of how he's done. Don't get me wrong; there is elements of his game he needs to work on. His finishing is definitely, definitely one of them. Um, because he smashed one in from 40 yards against Newcastle, and then missed. It proceeded to miss about four or five absolute sitters after that. And then, to be fair, against West Brom, he scored an absolutely fantastic, fantastic solo goal against West, West Brom, where he was just twisting and turning, and, and it was a fantastic finish. So I think, obviously, yeah. he's had really high praise as well. Obviously, Frank Lampard from his time at New York City, very, very high praise. David Villa, I mean, you know, David Villa, absolutely incredible praise for him. Andrea Perlo. So, you know, there's definitely, you know, if, if you've got three people like that who have seen potential in him, then I'm not going to argue with that. I'm not going to sit here in, in, in the living room and say he's he's um, he's not that good because he is good. He's clearly a good player and, and there's clearly the potential is there to get even better. Um, whether he's going to get himself into the England squad, I don't know. Um, because there's a lot of competition for the wings um, for England at the moment. Obviously, you've got Jaden Sancho, Sterling, Rashford, Grealish at the minute who's emerged this season. Um, there's probably loads of missed off as well. To be fair, Harvey Barnes as well. There's there's at least five there who are, who are most definitely head of um, Jack Harrison in the pecking order at the minute. And there's probably another two or three at least. So, um, you know, it's you know, oh, that's outrageous. That that's outrageous. <laughs> outrageous. We had to get some balance in here. Outrageous. I mean, I, oh, I don't think Eric Dyer will. Your good books here, Oscar. <laughs> Just combined eleven. <laughs> Oh, Shane, you're, you're running a thin line. Wow. <laughs> um, just on Jack Harrison there, he's the joint eighth most chances created in the Premier League this season. Um, yeah. He's he's six. He's only one behind uh, like Andy Roberts and James Rodriguez. He's the same amount as Mason Mount, Mohamed Salah and Raheem Sterling. Hmm. So he's uh, he's definitely in, in, in very good company there. And he's he's one player that we you know we should definitely be concerned about, but he's, he's not the only one. There's, of course, like of Rafinha on the other side. We've mentioned Patrick Bamford, who we've spoken about. Leeds do have uh, a lot of attack and threat, and 
like when in any game when you're sitting back defensively, you always have to worry about the, the players in the opposition team who are able to bang one in from 30 yards or do have the ability to to unlock a defense in one pass. And I think I, I do think Leeds do have the, the quality in there to do that. But this could genuinely be a game where one team just has to outscore the other. Like I don't think this is going to be a one one like Spurs have seen or a two one recent weeks. I think this could end up being uh you know a three three a four three kind of thing. Because uh, I know Leeds uh, in the top five European leagues this season they have the games with the most amount of goals which is, is 60 goals in their 15 or 16 league games so far, scoring 30 and conceding 30. It, it is absolutely crazy. And I do want to thank your uh, new channel member, Haytham Albatashi, uh, becoming our 12th channel, channel member. Thank you very much for, for joining Haytham. I uh, massively appreciate that. Um, be sure to check out all the perks you have available. And we will be doing our first uh, member call-in show on this channel very shortly, so make sure to keep an eye out for that one. Um, if you do want to become a member, again, hit that join button down below. And there's a little over 100 people here right now, so if you are interested in becoming a member or subscribing, uh, just go down below the video and everything will be um, explained for you there. Um, there's a few more people asking about Deli Ali and uh, will he be starting. Just to, to remind you, the, the Guardian UK have said that Deli Ali is expected to start in this game tomorrow, but um, I think we do have to take that one with a, with a pinch of salt coming from the Guardian, but it, it wouldn't surprise me if um, if he did if he did end up in the team. Um, Anthony, players aside from Kane and Son, mm -hmm. do you think there's anyone who could cause Leeds big problems for him? And then Dambé, sorry. Yeah, well, yeah, so I was like, that's the easiest <laughs> that's answer from you. I'm just like, yeah, <laughs> Dambé. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, I think those those three, of course, uh, they, they just provide so much for us. And I think, um, you know, Sonny is, is going to do what he does, like you said, being in those late runs. You know, I like I said, I did I did this uh, video about like rating our players, and I just feel like so many of them are so normal right now. They're they're not great, they're not world class, they're just so normal, and it's it's really um, I don't know. I feel a little disappointed about it because I felt like the summer had so much promise, right? We bought uh, you know yeah. so many, we we brought in a couple on loan, and I feel like. You know, I don't know. It sounds like Lucas Mora might be available. I know sometimes he makes, you know, dribbling runs that end with him just falling over and losing the ball. But, um, but I you also want to talk about a black hole. <laughs> <laughs> but I do feel like on his day, Lucas Mora can uh, provide something that other players can't. Uh, and I, I feel like as well, um, just like you'd mentioned before about Lamella. I think Lamella coming off the bench will give us uh, a boost. So I hope to see him, you know, probably 65th, 70th minute, give us something, especially at the end of the game, uh, bring that chippiness, get under their skin a little bit, do what he does best. Well, yeah. Oh, go ahead, Todd. Oh, I, I said we're probably going to see the Stevie B. Um, yeah. And, and Son, and they'll be flip flopping on the wings, depending. Yeah. Um, and depending on, on where they sit Delhi in. I'm not sure. I like I said, I want to see him play up wide as more of a runner, but you're right, he'll probably end up slotting in next to Ndombele as like a double yeah. ten. I don't really know. Um the one question I did want to ask Oscar is and speaking of Rafinha, like he's very dangerous going forward, but I I feel like oftentimes his final product lets him down. Um do Leeds fans feel similarly or are, are you highly on the Rafinha train? Um I mean, look, no, yeah, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't disagree. Sometimes it says the talent he has got, um, I think it's a hard one really because he's, he's so um, he's been put into the team so so quickly. That's the thing I would say in terms of when he first arrived. I didn't think he'd find himself in the team so quickly. But Helder Costa, who was starting in that position at the start of the season, um, it's just kind of. In, in to be quite honest, in terms of form wise, it's just kind of fallen off a cliff, really, in terms of form. Um, for the start of the season, he was playing absolutely fantastically well, best probably period of his Leeds career, um, and he's just completely lost form. So, Rafinha's naturally come in straight away. So, I think he's shown absolutely serious quality, um, especially his finishing, his ball striking is phenomenal. I mean, he scored a really good goal against West Brom, um, yeah, you know, recently, he scored a really good goal against Everton as well. I think maybe the one, the next step for him, I think I would have to agree, is creating more chances. You know, just being a little bit more decisive in the final third, but in terms of technical quality, ability to take on a man, get involved in the game, absolutely first class. I think obviously the pace, I think the other thing that's underrated is he's got a lot of pace about him as yeah. well. He, he's he's style, stylistically, he's not too dissimilar to like a Bernardo Silva, <clears throat> almost Lamella in the sense that he'll quite, drop quite deep, but he's got that pace just to, you know, kind of almost lure like his full back 
to him kind of thing, and then just speed behind him in that. Yeah. Line. And he's, 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 so in, he's such an intelligent footballer and probably one of our best players at this moment in time. Well, speaking of speed, how do you guys plan on dealing with Sergio Reguilon, who's likely going to start as the, the left-sided fullback for us? Because um, that guy, you want to talk about world-class, um, especially if, if there's a Spanish pig on the line, watch out. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I really hope it is Reguilon. <laughs> yeah. I say that. I'm hoping it's Ben Davis, to be honest. Um, <laughs> I bet you do. There we go. <laughs> um, See, yeah. I Regulon, I mean, I remember watching him for Sevilla um, last season in terms of against Barcelona, Real Madrid, the Europa League run. Um, Sevilla went on and ultimately won. He was absolutely fantastic. He's probably the standout player in that team. Such a fantastic footballer. And I think I was amazed that there was such little interest in him other than Tottenham uh, mm -hmm. at that moment in time. I think he's really picked up a top quality player there. If you can get him on a permanent, um, that would be absolutely immense for, for you guys. But it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. He's not even talking yeah. to Zidane. Zidane. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not worried about him going anywhere. He would. He was on Christmas, had a uh, Tottenham uh, Santa hat on. I'm not worried about a single thing. <laughs> yeah, he's been there. in his town in PJs for a while. Well, if, no when doubt. it gets to the end of the season, obviously it looks like he's going to leap because Real Madrid have got such a vast array of fullbacks at this moment in time. Yeah. Do you not think there'll be interest from other clubs as well? You know, in terms of um, you know. I, I think you will get him, but um, I think obviously looking at regular in terms of trying to deal with him, it's hard. You know, it's well, like we have, we have first right of refusal, if I'm not mistaken, in that deal. Like Daniel Levy is a genius when it comes to the business side of things. If he's got an opportunity to get a player from Real Madrid, even, it doesn't matter how great the terms are for everybody else. Daniel knows what he's doing. Like I'm, I have complete faith in that guy to sign uh, Reggie on a permanent. Yeah, the, the way that deal is structured, it's um, we signed him on a... On a, I think it's a four or five year deal for 30 million pounds and it, essentially it is like on paper it is a permanent transfer but Real Madrid have the option in the summer of 2021 or 2022 uh, to, to buy him back and for Real Madrid in those two periods there's a 45 million pound release clause so he is essentially uh, a permanent signing but uh, Real Madrid do have uh, the option to take him back but um, I, it is Daniel it's deal by, the, by the sounds of things it is yeah. it? Oh, it's sensational the band's an absolute genius um, Shane is really really pushing today saying Regulon is not world class at all I mean so Shane, I, I'm not okay, sure about that. Let, let me let me just I know it's a little bit contrarian but I, I'm not saying that he's not world class I just I, sometimes he makes poor decisions I feel like he he relies way too much on his pace and he's kind of an airhead like he'll he'll just like miss out he's go sliding across the field it's really disappointing and I know Ben Davies people give him a lot of crap but I feel like he's so so much more consistent that sometimes I feel much more comfortable with Ben Davies now obviously with with playing against Leeds we want the speed but I I just feel like sometimes yeah Regulon is he, he kind of is He's like a little kid, like, and you can see it in his Instagram posts. He's just like, <laughs> he's just like a child. He loves it. I think he loves the game. He's like looking around and just like enjoying it. But it's like he he gets distracted by you know a dandelion on the ground or something like that, and 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 he loses his mind for a second. And he can get away with it every once in a while, but. I think you guys will punish us. I think you'll you'll punish us if he if he loses his mind for even a few seconds because, yeah. It, it, you're, the way that you go about it is is strong. It's pressing, and he loves those little nutmegs and stuff like that. If if you don't, if you miss one of those nutmegs, it's going to be a nightmare. Well, but he does have the speed to make it up for it. And, and listen, yeah. I'm not disagreeing with you in this in the sense that he makes immature decisions. But yeah. how old is the kid? Like 19, 20? No, I know. I'm, I mean, we are where we are. If there was anybody that you could ask for to coach him defensively oh, to totally. be disciplined, it's Jose. So yep. by the time that he gets into year two of the his Jose coaching, yeah. um, I, I'm not concerned about yeah. that. When it comes to, to quality – Mm -hmm. Um, and, and especially as the season goes oh, it's along, there. he gets more and more and more yeah. playtime under a Jose system. Yeah. I, I mean, I, the question of him versus Ben Davies is not is not a real one. And I think, to Shane's point, the proof will be in the pudding. I might be a little hyperbolic here, but um, I, I think that by the end of this season, uh, if not for sure by the end of next season, you yeah. might feel differently about that statement. If he was consistent, he's he's out of this world. I mean, he, he's, yeah, he's amazing, but I just feel like at the moment, his inconsistency makes me nervous and, and I just feel so nervous all the time. As a <laughs> I don't need any more of that. Yeah. 
Um, look, I think it's we're, we're at that time of the day now where the the one that I never enjoy. But uh, actually, before we get there, we've uh, another new channel member, uh, Saro Inul. Thank you very much for joining the channel membership. Uh, massively appreciated as always to everyone who does join. Um, it's time for us horror predictions, and I I always hate this time of the day. Uh, and I know a lot of people do, but look, uh, we start with you, Oscar. Tottenham leads. What are you going with? On the basis, Leeds start the game well and um, get the first goal. I'm going to go 1-1. One, one. I'm going to go 1-1. One, one. I don't think... Yeah, I'm going to go 1-1. One, one. I think I think it's a... we just can't keep Kane and Son quiet. If we do, I'd be absolutely over the moon. But I think one of them will produce the motor magic at some point. I don't think it'll be the greatest game of all time. Um, but it'll be uh, it'll certainly be interesting to watch uh, in terms of being... It'll be a really tight game. It's probably the best word for it in terms of it. I don't think either team will run away with it, to be honest. So, yeah, I'm going to go for 1-1. Mm -hmm. uh, a very wise man once told me, if you predict for your team to draw, it means you think they're going to lose, but I'm not going to say anything. Um... <laughs> well... <laughs> <laughs> I'm only joking you. Um, yeah, I agree. It could be a very, very tight one. But, uh, Anthony, what are you going to go with? All right, so I said already, I, I think they're going to score at least once. Uh, I think we have to be clinical. We'll probably get four or five good chances. We have to make them work. And I think because uh, the Fulham game was postponed, Harry Kane, you know, the baby has been had. He can, you know, really focus on the match. I'm going to say 3-2 with a Harry Kane brace. I'm loving it. Todd, what are you going to say? Uh, I'm going to say 4-2 with a Harry Kane brace. I absolutely agree with mm -hmm. Harry Kane. He's probably going to get fouled in a box and end up with a penalty, and he's going to score one from open play with a sun assist because I like that a lot. Sonny gets on the score sheet as well. Um, it's three early for us, um, and you guys claw two back. Uh, it's just how we play. Um, and, and then we score one late off of a set piece because both of our teams are fucking terrible at defending set pieces. <laughs> Oh, the set pieces. Uh, that's the, I'm thinking back at 1-1 now and thinking that might have been... Um, that, I, I'll go 2-2, two, two, actually. I'll go 2-2. Two, two. There'll be a goal in the 1-1 was really, really uh, negative, wasn't it? I'll go 2-2. Two, two. I'll go for a better game. We believe in your squad to score two, you know. We do. <laughs> do you want, actually, uh, we believe here? in our squad to give up two to you. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. It's a one. I've had a lot of ideas in here. Yeah. <laughs> um, Rob saying Luciano Becchio is a name that I haven't heard in ages. Saying Beckford and Becchio would have uh, caused us massive problems. Uh, Rob also saying uh, two one to Leeds. Um, I, I said when I was on all these TV yesterday with Oscar and Joe, I you said got two one. That comment quick, you know, and you got rid of that comment quick, Matt. I, 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 I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> very quick. There it, very quick. there it is. Okay, you happy? Um, uh, when I was on yesterday, um, I, I said I said two one to Spurs, but Elena, who was on all these TV, and by the way, I'm going to drop the link to that uh, in the live chat in a second. It was an absolutely outstanding debate with Elena uh, about Tottenham's uh, the the way we play and stuff. It's on all these TV, so I'll, I'll link that in a second. Um, I said two one, and, and she said three two, and then going to have to lead towards what she said a bit more now because I think it uh, it could just be a a really fascinating and trolling encounter with you know like goals galore, set pieces, counter attacks. There's just a, a lot of chances uh, for scoring. So I'm going to go for for a three two win. We have to stay confident. But uh, as as Anthony was saying earlier on, it's a very worrying team. We've all said uh, leads to score twice, but uh, look, it wouldn't surprise me. Um, Luke, they're saying what's happened to my arm. Um, I broke my wrist playing soccer because I'm an idiot. Um, but uh, it'll, it'll be all right soon. Um, look, lads, I suppose we leave it there. Um, it's been an, uh, a sensational discussion. I've, I've really enjoyed all of it. Um, Oscar, Anthony, Todd, I might as well go one by one. Oscar, where can we, where can we find you on YouTube and Twitter? So you can find us on All East TV, um, on YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram, basically just All East TV. Um, and yeah, we just basically do um, Leash United content, all Leash United content we can do, uh, match previews, match reviews. Uh, we do a little bit of Premier League general content as well. We do something called Before the Whistle Blows, previewing Premier League games, uh, Monday Night Football, which is more of a general, broader Leash United discussion. And we obviously get opposition fans like yourself um, on just to discuss the games. And we do watch-alongs as well. Um, when we don't get, uh, we, we got a bit of bad press for a watch along we did a couple of weeks ago, um, as Matt will know about. Oh, um, no, but no, we do enjoy it. We do enjoy it. We're not, uh, yeah, we do really enjoy it. So um, we do a bit of everything. Uh, we try and upload on a daily basis. And yeah, it's, it's really fun. Yeah, and I do recommend to anyone, whether you're a Leeds fan or not, to go over and check it out. I'm always there for their watch-alongs uh, when I can. And I just try and drop that link in the chat if you want to go check out my debate with Elena from Lily White TV um, about how, how Josie lines up his team. Make sure to go over and check that out. Um, Anthony, we'll come to you next. Where can we find you? 
Yeah, on YouTube, it's Let's Talk Tottenham. I uh, just started the channel back in June, but have just really enjoyed it. We've got a Discord server as well. People getting their thoughts in all the time. And yeah, on Twitter, Instagram, I even started a TikTok because you know, what the heck are we doing out here in 2021? <laughs> but it's Let's underscore talk underscore THFC. Brilliant. And Andy recently uploaded a video. Um, his He made a Tottenham version of the old Lang Syne, and it is, right. uh, it's well worth the watch. Make sure to go and check that out. And mm -hmm. Todd, where can we find you? Uh, you can find me personally at, um, at TC underscore Cacho on Twitter. Uh, also at Tottenham Pod on Twitter. I am graciously part of the uh, Tottenham Podsker crew. Uh, Podsker TV as well. All of the links are on Twitter. Um, happy, as always, to talk about the fantastic Lily Whites. Uh, thank you, guys. Appreciate mm -hmm. it. Yeah, yeah thanks fun. very much, Todd. And again, I uh, highly recommend going checking out Podsberg TV. Uh, the links to all the three YouTube channels mentioned will be down in the description below uh, if you do want to check that out. Uh, for, for my channel, if you have enjoyed this, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. And with the January transfer window opening tomorrow, we're going to have as much content as we possibly can following all the Tottenham's transfer business. And of course, Fabrizio Romano will be back on the channel uh, in the next week or two to discuss all things Tottenham as well. So make sure to hit that subscribe button um, if you do want to... Uh, do you want to come for that? Uh, make sure to go check out my, my last couple of transfer videos as well. A bit of news on Marcel Sabitzer and, and Milan Skriniar as well. Um, and as, al as always, to everyone who's joined us uh, over the last hour or so, about 2,000 of you, thank you very much for watching.